Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. We have been talking about heteroscedasticity. Now, in today's class, we are going to actually familiarize ourselves with certain tests to sort of perform to know if heteroscedasticity is present or not. So, the test actually varies and it varies depending on what assumption we take about the distribution of the error term. So, we can think that the error term is actually distributed with the values of x that we have seen previously like as x increases the error term the value of the error is actually also increasing so that we have one kind of uh, test. Also we can like have a less restrictive kind of uh, situation where we do not assume something like that and we do a different test. We are going to see this different test based on the different assumptions. The first test that we perform is called Goldfeld quant test or GQ test. Goldfeld quant u u a n d t Goldfeld quant test. So, this test is somewhat restrictive it assumes that the error term is actually uh, distributed with the values of x. So, we can basically assume the assumption is the value of u i of u i increases with the value of x i with the value of x i. So, if I actually plot this, so I would have a distribution something like this the distribution of the error term. So, let us say this is the value of u i and this is the value of x i and we will see something like this. If we have to perform this GQ test, so we have to have something like this ok. Um, we will see uh, how in different situations whether we can apply uh, GQ test, Goldfeld quant test or not, uh, but this is the primarily the assumption that we have to make before we actually perform the Goldfeld quant test. Now, if this is the how the error term looks like uh, and if we want to understand if heteroscedasticity is present or not, so what we need to do is simply we need to see let us say we can divide the whole range of observations into different parts. Let us say I have I divide it here, let, let me use a different color. Let us say I divide this here, I create one sort of wall here, I create another divider here and what I will try to do is that I will try to see if there is the variance of this part and variance of this part are significantly different. Okay. So, if the variances are significantly different say at the uh, lower value of x and at the higher value of x, so then we can say that well there is heteroscedasticity. And how we do it? Uh, there is certain rules we follow. Usually we take this part as let us say this is called let us say the total number, number of observation is n and I take some n prime from here and I take some n prime from here. So, these are same, same m, the number of observations here and number of observations there we take same and this n prime usually is equal to 3 by 8 of n. So, 3 8 of the total number, number of observation here and 3 8 of the total number of observations at the end. So, this two we take and this part is basically n minus 2 n prime. Okay. So, what we do here we completely drop we completely drop this part. So, what we are left out is this 3 by 8 n here 3 by 8 n there. Now, how we actually do the test? So, we actually perform a f test here to understand the if the variances are actually significantly different or not and to do that how we we run a regression. So, let us say we have for for the you know or in the original regression equation we have something like beta 2 x let us say x 2 and say let us say beta 3 x 3 and some error term. Okay. Now, what how we do it we we basically run the regression first for this group here and second for this group here. Okay. We run the same regression, we have the same explanatory variable. So, that way the 
will see the degrees of freedom that we calculate for for both the regression equations are going to be same okay so how we will actually see if the two uh, you know the error the, the variances of the error are similar or not so what we will do is simply we will do a f test variant of f test where we will do f is equal to say residual sum of square rss2 by corresponding dof and by rss1 residual sum of square by corresponding dof okay so how we do for f test we take the larger one in the numerator okay so this is the this is the part where we have larger variance so let's call it rss2 or you can also call it say rss large let me use a different color it looks a little cluttered let's say you also write rss large and the previous one the smaller one we call rss you know one or we can also call it rss small residual sum of square small okay now how we do it is we basically divide this corresponding residual sum of square with their degrees of freedom and then we get the f statistic now what is the de degrees of freedom here so degrees of freedom here is also pretty straightforward since we have in both the cases we have uh, the number of observations same which is n prime and the the k is basically the number of explanatory variable is also same right so the dof here is dof in both the cases is going to be n prime minus k all right now that's how we calculate the f statistic and then we simply do a f test where we see if the f statistic where the f statistic is falling okay your calculated f statistic if it is smaller or higher than the f critical okay so let's say my f critical is here for some so and so degrees of freedom dof1 dof2 and my if calculated depending on whether it is here or here we take a decision whether to reject or not reject the null hypothesis so null hypothesis here is h not is going to be that rss1 and rss2 or basically we can simply say the models are homo the model is homoscedastic or so there is no heteroscedasticity whereas h1 is that the model has heteroscedasticity model has heteroscedasticity hetero scedasticity all right so if i have my if calculated let's say if calculated is here so that means it is on the right side of the my f critical so if it is on the right side of my f critical so then i basically reject the null that the the uh, the models are the basically it is homoscedastic so there is no you know the variances are basically equal so that is not the case if my f calculated is going to be on the left uh, right side of my f critical okay so that's about it and let's do a small problem small hands on uh, i'll give you this problem let's say i have let's uh, let's say i have this um, i have a you know i am running a regression with n is equal to 136 and let's say i have this model i don't need to specify the model i only need the degrees of freedom for, from here b1 b2 x2 just the same b3 x3 plus the error term and then i have let's say let's say the residual sum of square rss large is going to be let's say 1000 or rss2 or rss small or rss1 is going to be let's say uh, 800 now i have to say if this model has heteroscedasticity or not okay so how do i do that i simply get the f statistic 
my f statistic calculated is going to be rss2 and my n is say 136 so my n prime is going to be 3 8th 3 8th of my n so i basically took this number for my own convenience so it's r is going to be if i multiply it it's going to be i think uh, 51 okay so n prime is 51 so i have 51 and my k here my degrees of freedom so basically to get my degrees of freedom the number of exponential variables which is k is equal to 2 so i have 51 minus 2 and here also i have 800 by 51 minus 2 we know that the degrees of freedom are basically same so essentially what i get is um, i get 1.25 1.25 so that's my f calculated now i have to get my f critical f critical and my f critical is basically what is the degrees of freedom for f critical is f 49 49 okay so in both the cases i have same degrees of freedom which is 49 here now how do i obtain this i have to basically go get the get the f table so let me actually get the f table here f distribution table and i usually take a significance level alpha is equal to 0 0.05 so for a 0 0.05 uh, alpha and for f value 40 let me increase the size a little bit i hope it is visible so here i have you can see that i don't have exact uh, d d uh, degrees of freedom is equal to 49 but i have the range 40 to 60 so we can get something like in between uh, close to 50 and here also I'll see that we don't have exact value for 49, but we have the value for 40 and 60. So basically, our F statistic would lie somewhere in between these values. So this is for 40 and 50, uh, 60. So one could be in between these two. So 1.69 and 1.63. So let's say it is going to 1.65. And this one, 1 1.59, 1.53. Let's say it is going to be 1.55. So my f critical is going to be somewhere in between between 1.655 to 1.65 right so we can just get an approximate value and that's enough for us because our f calculator is 1.25 which is actually smaller than my f critical so if my f calculator is smaller than my f critical so then that is that means my f calculator is actually my f calculator is actually going to lie here so going to lie here so if my f calculator is going to lie here so that means i actually re reject the null hypothesis of um, homoscedasticity okay so this is always confusing heteroscedasticity and homoscedasticity but yeah basically heteroscedasticity means that the you know sort of disproportionate variance and that is the uh, basically the alternative hypothesis so essentially we say that the models are not of equal variance and this is how we actually conduct the um, this uh, Goldfeld quant test. All right, so there are a few more things to talk about when you talk about Goldfeld quant test. So one thing is that uh, we uh, need to, you know, like in sometimes, so we, we kind of said that the error term distribution is going to look like this, but there could be other situations also, right? So there could be a situation where, you know, you can have your error term inversely distributed with a x so let's say this is looking like this it's more like this okay or it could be something like this so there could be different types of distribution of the error term uh, and in case suppose your variance is actually decreasing with the increasing value of x so what we do is we simply you know uh, basically change rss1 and rss2 we say that initially we, we, we did rss2 by rss1 but in these cases we will do rss1 by rss2 okay so essentially if if this is if this is your here it is this is your rss1 so initially it was in the denominator 
but now it will go in the numerator. So essentially, you remember that when you calculate the F statistic, you need to have the higher value on the numerator here. So basically, you do RSS one by RSS two. Here also, you do RSS one by RSS two. So RSS two goes in the denominator. All right. So this is how we do the Goldfeld quant test. So another type. So this is a numerical variable. We kind of got all the values of the variable, but it can also happen for qualitative variable, which is basically the dummy variable. So let's say you are trying to see the abortion rate for different religion groups, like people are actually, you know, if religion actually influences abortion and if the, you know, the kind of uh, heteroscedasticity is present for that. Similarly, if you want to see the wage for male, females, and so basically use of dummy variables. So even then you can use this GQ test and that's a, it's a good test to do that, do in that, in that kind of situations. So what you have to do is you again basically get the, you know, the error, basically the residual sum squares for different dummy categories and you kind of do the F test. So in that case you don't have to follow that 3 by 8 uh, rule. So that's basically the Goldfeld quant test with certain restrictions. So in the next lecture we are going to see the test for heteroscedasticity where we do not have any restriction. Thank you.